Hey, welcome back to Mobility Wad. Jesse Burdick on the camera. More importantly, <laughs> Katie Hogan with me here is guest guest <clears throat> coach, guest star. Um, I asked Katie to come on because we got a, an email from a coach talking about uh, training girls and boys volleyball at young levels. And some of the shoulder positions, questions, the missing ranges, how do we train it, or some ideas about training, and also how do we get athletes into that position we can't get there. And we pulled Katie Hogan out. She's a pretty good dancer. Pretty good strength athlete. You may have seen her on other <laughs> other TV shows and things. Uh, one of the reasons she's here is that she's an all-American javelin thrower. Little known uh, side effect of being strong and awesome, being all-American. But also, she's an all-American volleyball player at UCSD. Yes. UCSD. UC San so Diego. UC San Diego. Yep. So you played, started four years. Yes. And you had so much shoulder pain. Is that right? No shoulder pain. No shoulder pain. None. In fact, you should be able to come out of any movement unharmed at one rep or a million reps. And what you see is that a lot of our young kids, they, get to the, they finally get to the college and the shoulders are shut, right? Oh yeah, totally. For freshman year to senior year, I had girls that were icing their shoulders every day after practice, every game, every tournament we ever did, every rep they have to, they feel that pain. Oh, every rep, that's cool. Every rep. <laughs> so here's where we go. We're gonna talk through some ideas about some training and what we're going to use is really thinking about this, the training stimulus, stimulus as a way of, of just reinforcing or making the position more robust. So the, we call this the missing corner. So if you go end range flexion, go end range flexion for me. It's not good enough to just be all the way up out here. End range flexion is that the shoulder needs to all the way come all the way over into this corner and have the armpit forward. And this is one of the reasons that the dumbbell in a hammer position is a nice expression of what full range is going all the way up. We see a couple things. Katie has her butt on, her rib cage is down. It's this last little tight bit is the absolute expression of peak shoulder, and she break, oh, breaking a little bit. She's not warmed up. But this position represents the stable overhead position, not out here. One of the issues is that we use strength and conditioning. It's a formal expression of movement and stability, but I need to be able to go achieve these stable positions and then kind of freestyle out, right? Because blocking, I don't block in this position. Right, exactly. If you're going to go from here, you've got to maintain that and reach from there. If you break into here, you're going to miss your block. You're no, you're no way your hand will get over the net, and if it does, it's not going to be strong. So one of the things that we like about, as we're training as a group, is that, and uh, some of the coaches we think, like Jesse, we don't necessarily train stabilization exercises. We don't do that because every movement that we do has a stabilization component. Right, exactly. So if, if my athletes understand the movement principle of being stable, then they're going to be able to apply that principle when it matters most in an actual sport, right? Yeah. So here's our, one of our simple tests. The first one is just putting a single dumbbell overhead. We're going to use the dumbbells because you can extrapolate dumbbells into a big group quickly. So go ahead and throw one dumbbell overhead. We've got a light dumbbell here. In this hammer position, rib cage down, butt tight, we can see that she's got that full range. Now, if an athlete, I load them up even with a 30, the elbow bends a little bit, that's an expression of missing range. The shoulder's internally rotating, so elbow straight, locked out. This is a position she can hang out in all day long. One of the things we'll see is that we actually have to block with both hands, right? right? So if I give you two dumbbells, twice the fun, and this is a real nice tell that it's the athlete able to keep the rib cage down, express overhead positioning. I'm looking for the rotation as a coach, is that armpit screwing forward to make that, that shoulder stable, and then elbows have to be straight. So in this position with one dumbbell at a time, we can just start working on basic stabilization. Does the athlete understand where the overhead stable position is if they can get there and she's starting to decay? Okay, come on, get up there. Okay, so simple ideas out of this are walking lunge, keeping the armpit tight, and while I'm looking for as a coach, is is my athlete able to maintain that stable position without starting to overextend and compensate? Oh, oh. and then is is it is she internally rotating in that bottom position? All right, give me a break for a second. Oh, oh. It was an 80 pounds. I know, it's, it's, 80 it's like 80 pounds. Oh, my. <laughs> Ah! We, did, we covered this before with Jesse about how those type of things. All right, so that simple walking lunge or even waiter's walk, right. all we're looking for as a coach is not is the, bar, the dumbbell overhead, yeah. but is it stable? And what position is happening here? That's right. If I'm broken at the rib cage, which we'll talk about in a bit, then I'm not going to be able to stabilize the shoulder. So I've got to create a stable chassis off of which I can create torque, right? right. Double, do double for me. For twice the fun, twice the, uh, the horror, now, rib cage is down, butt is tight, armpits forward, you see no bend in the elbows, go ahead and take a walking lunge, just hold that bottom position. So, there we go. Now we can really see we're challenging that bottom range, she's got to be in a good stable position without decaying and not making a bad face. Alright, pop back up. Excellent. So, 
Basic simple ideas. Okay. Second concept now is taking this basic shape and tenet of being able to get all the way up into this corner. You can see that athletes don't have this. Now we can do something like a Turkish kettle. Right. So go ahead and do a Turkish kettle without the weight for me. Sure. And check this out. Here's our take on the Turkish getup. What I'm really trying to train is can I get my athlete into a stable shoulder position? Ultimately, you can dissociate the wrist. Can I get him sh stable the whole time? So she pushes up onto her left elbow, and the shoulder stays stable. So now, as she goes up into, into bringing the leg through, sh oh, shoulder stays stable. We don't want to see that shoulder one. Do that again for us, Katie. It says this time, keep that tight and don't lose that. Go slower, slower, slower. There we go. It's this position, up. Oh, she becomes a little unstable. I want her working on the limits of this motor control. Then she brings her leg up to a high lunge, still stable. Now it's that same position again. Rip cage is down, and I get to practice that stability at the range, and then she stands up, up, oh, and there's that overhead position. Pull that in tight, pulling it back, okay? So what's this, what that looks like with a dumbbell? Remember, if my athlete doesn't know where to go, why am I mobilizing there? We prioritize the movement and the motor control first. Stabilization, she stays stable the whole time, really seeing that she understands. And then also, look, I get a two for one. Is this shoulder stable? She great, oh, oh, there we go, now it's in a better position. Go ahead and press up onto the hands. Same thing, this shoulder screwing into the ground, that, that shoulder is tight, bring the arm through, don't lose it right there, fight for it, fight for it, fight. Good. And then she can reclaim, I can slow her down every moment and keep the load light so that I'm really working on the stabilization component. And then stand back up. Beautiful. How easy was that? 15 pounds on the scale. Win! Alright. <laughs> As we get a little bit more advanced, we can do things like snatching the dumbbell. Can you show us that? Even just a muscle snatch. Zip. And then working on finishing in that stable overhead position and then finishing into that in the, the idea. Right. Right. Adding speed to challenge the position. But more importantly, come on over here, check this out. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. We face us. Yeah. But all the way down. We're not gonna do a pull up. Okay. We're not gonna have a pull up. Yeah. Here's what's gonna happen here is that yeah. we see basic shape of blocking, which we can talk about in a second, right? Being able to achieve a stable shoulder, which is to rip cage down, butt is squeezed, toes pointed. Carl Pally would say. Are you in the, if your toes aren't pointed, are you in a good position here? Why are you here? While I'm his butt? Hey, whoa, what's going on? <laughs> toes aren't pointed, you're not in a good position, yeah? In the air? Check. Gymnastics. Yes. Okay. So, but I'm in the air, I see this, this triple extension, but it's tight. And what I should see uh, is that the armpits, arms straight again, and the armpits really, really tight coming forward. So now, if we just start a little basic kipping drill, I should see trying to create global extension through the body, not hinging, and I'm trying to stay engaged in shoulder forward. So basic hip drill, now do that loose so we can see what the shoulder looks like. Broken elbow, bad wind up, she can't generate any force in that position, she enters the tunnel wretched. That looks awful. That's, you're so good at that. Thanks. <laughs> I would never do that that way. Never do that. So the idea though is I can move my athlete's hands in and can they hang and just achieve this stable position and then start adding some motion out of it because it's difficult. As soon as you break, shoulder internally rotates. Yeah. yeah, before they even start the movement, when they're hanging there, get them to feel that, how they can control the rotation. How you, when you grab my arm, I could find new range there just by you rotating my arm. Now check this out. Carl has this sneaky drill he does. Jump up and grab that with one hand. Can you do that? Okay. Now, can, feet together, butt tight. Now relax and watch her how, how she unrotates. Right, so when, when she's soft, she ends up rotating. So go ahead and see if you can put the armpit forward there. Ah, there's that position. So just creating that, that's tough, isn't it? Just creating that fixed rotation off of that and just hanging there is a good, easy way to do it. Oh, yeah. Part two, what to do about it and some implications of bad position. This is the training position, part one. Good job.